Man, after a long day at the mines, all I want to do is relax, put my feet up, and listen to my favorite tunes. Ah, wait a second. Uh oh. My diamonds! As you can see, it leaves a pretty big hole. <laughs> Welcome to episode 14. That was my new exploding jukebox bomb. Ah, that was fun. I'm able to send a redstone pulse when a block is updated using a bud switch. And that set off a whole bunch of TNT that I had hidden under this guy's house. Poor dude. And a putting a record in a jukebox is one of the ways to update a block. You can also use doors, uh, fence gates, cake, and a couple other things. Or you can just do it by placing or destroying a block. So yep, that's a lot of fun. I'm going to make a separate video with the tutorial for that. But uh, might as well take a little bit of a look at the uh, the wiring. So here's the house. Good as new. And as you can see, there's nothing that you can see. There is no indication that there is a trap here. The only indication is if you go to the other side. This is where some of the wiring is exposed. Right now this trap is unarmed because I don't want to blow myself up when I'm in here. But it works uh, fairly simply. Here we have our rows of TNT and it's wired up to the trap. Now I'll show you how it works. Plus placing uh, this torch here arms the trap so any block update near that piston will blow it the fuck up. So what's happening here, this is basically a one-shot bud switch since there's no, re no need to reset it because uh, it gets blown up. <laughs> basically this uh, torch is sending power into this block here, uh, this block here which is one above uh, the piston and slightly off to the side. So it doesn't power the piston directly but once uh, the block above the piston is updated by putting the record in the jukebox it says, oh I have power and then extends this block downwards. And here we have another torch with a repeater. And once this block uh, extends down here, it completes the circuit, sends power to this repeater, and blows up a TNT. Really easy to do, and I'll show you a tutorial on that later in the week. Yep, but that's what I've been working on the past couple days. The hard part was making a, a bud switch that was like totally hidden and I could use on the floor. It works pretty well. Ideally, you want to place this up against a mountain so it's completely hidden and there's nothing uh, and no one could find it basically. Because this is a little bit obvious in the back of the house, but it's uh, more or less the best way to do it. So, yeah, that's uh, a lot of fun. Uh, you could do a lot of damage to someone with that. Not only with uh, a jukebox, but you could do it with doors, you could do it with uh, cake. Lots of cool stuff. Also, it detects uh, grass growth and death. Um, and You know, it detects a lot of things. Uh, crops growing. But yeah, I already talked about the bud switches last episode, so that's one of the uses for them. Alright, three quick things before we move on. Uh, what is this texture pack? Um, somebody in the comments the other day asked me why I don't use texture packs with my LP. And it's because I know a lot of people get frustrated if somebody uses a texture pack, including me. Uh, and because you really can't tell what's what if you're not familiar with the texture pack. So that's why I don't use it. It gets really annoying. So that's why I haven't and probably will never use a texture pack unless it's very minimal uh, with my LP series. And also I can't tell what other people, what the, uh, the city would look like to other people unless they use default. So. Same reason I don't use mods, because um, other people would get frustrated because basically I'm using stuff that they don't use or can't use. So it wouldn't be it wouldn't be fair to use texture packs or mods. And that's uh, what I have to say about that. Um, if you do want to know though, when I play by myself, I do use a, uh, a texture pack. It, this one is called Sortex. It's a 64 by 64 bit. Um, it is my favorite. It's very smooth, though I, I will probably change the lava I don't like that. Everything else is very nice and smooth. Uh, I'll, I'll put a link in the description if you want to check it out, but it's uh, my favorite. Very nice. I also use um, 
the Albion pack occasionally. I uh, used Coral Craft occasionally, and uh, there's a couple others that I forget. But this is my main pack. I do like it. So, uh, yeah, two other quick things before we move on to the rest of the episode. Um, about a month ago, I promised you guys that I would do a 750 subscriber special. <laughs> Well, that is come and gone quite a bit. I'm now up to 1815 or so, 1815 subscribers. Wow, my channel's grown a lot, and it's still growing very fast. So I have to thank everyone that's subscribed, everyone that's uh, lent their support, their their comments, their suggestions, because it really it makes the Minecraft experience a lot more rewarding for me, and it makes everything just better all around. So got to thank you guys for all your support, and I will be doing a. 2000th subscriber special that's going to come sooner than you think. Um, the subscribers will. <laughs> the video might take a, a couple of weeks, but uh, it's not going to be stupid awesome, but it's going to be pretty awesome. I have a good idea planned for that. So look for that in the coming weeks. I'm going to start working on that probably tomorrow. So I'm going to do that. And uh, yeah, but my channel's grown quite a bit. I'm, I'm very pleased with uh, how everything's gone. And I really want to thank the people that have been there, you know, with me from the beginning. As I remember when I first started doing Minecraft videos, you know, my videos had less than 100 views on each of them. You know, 60 views here, 70 views there, maybe 90 if I got lucky, and maybe one or two comments. <laughs> well, we come a long way from that, and there's still a long way to go, hopefully. So, yeah. Thanks to everyone that subscribed and uh, supported me through the last few months. Anyway, so the third thing I want to talk about was, uh, oh shit, what was the third thing? Oh, I remember now. Uh, a guy named BruinsFan1998 commented, and uh, I don't know if that's your, your birth date or if something cool happened with the Bruins in 98. I don't really remember, but uh, I know 94, the Rangers won the Cup, 94, and 95, the Devils, 93, Montreal, but whatever. Um, uh, he commented that he would like to see me actually building more stuff in the videos rather than just, you know, uh, cutting it and uh, updating you on progress. I made a decision a long time ago that I was going to cut out a lot of the building uh, for the LP because or else these episodes would just be like 25 minutes of me building one thing and it'd be, I, I thought it'd be very boring for a lot of people so I've, I've tried to cut a lot of that grunt work and background stuff out of these vids but um, if you guys would like to see me build some things like say something that's small and takes five minutes for instance the farm that we made last episode uh, let me know because if you guys really want to see me building it uh, what I'll do is I'll build it and I'll, I'll do it in, in fast forward motion at least you can see me doing that uh, if that's if that's what you guys want I'll, I'll do that from now on but I'm not gonna put like uh, an hour of me digging out this uh, the walls or something that'd just be silly so let me know if that would be cool with you guys if that's what you want and I'll uh, I'll start doing that in the future so yeah that's enough talking uh, let's get to uh, what we're gonna do for the rest of the episode alright I think we have a working wheat farm here so I uh, made this step sign I added glowstone to it and uh, yeah, it has a flush system to flush all the weed out. And uh, I haven't put the fence posts underneath, but I will for the um, the final version. And these tiles are hydrated by having uh, water underneath uh, these at each side. And here. And that hydrates all of these tiles all the way across, so that's good. Makes the wheat grow faster. And we have our flush system right here. Now these blocks are held up by pistons, and when I press the lever, it will uh, flush all the wheat. And the wheat will come down here into this channel and collect right there, and I can send it wherever I want. If I wanted to send it over there or something, I could do that. So let's, uh, let's take a look at this thing. And that's the flush system, just like that. Um, looks like we'll have a little bit of a problem with some of the stuff falling on the side, but that shouldn't be too big a deal. And all the wheat and seeds will collect right down here. And when it's all done, I can either just pick it up like this, or I could turn this lever off. 
and all the wheat and seeds will flow right there for easy convenient pickup so very very easy I think my inventory is full unless I can pick it up but yeah so that's uh, that's the farm I think this will work nicely it looks nice I gotta say and it's uh, fairly easy to use and it will look really good in the as the centerpiece for the farming hall so I think this is how I'm gonna do it uh, it's gonna be a pain in the ass to get the sandstone but that's something I'll deal with later oh and the wiring um, simple we have this lever connected over here to these pistons that are extended by the torches and when I press the lever over here it will depress these pistons turn the torches off and open the floodgates and if we don't want to use it as a wheat farm we can just use it like this as a fountain <laughs> which actually looks really nice I might actually do something some sort of fountain like this in the future and there we go as you can see the pistons are right underneath there and yeah I haven't added the, uh, the fence posts so I just <laughs> made my uh, farmland back in the dirt that's okay so yeah that's uh, basically how the farm works I think it's quite good and I think I'm gonna stick with this idea unless someone has something better alright so a lot of people have been uh, commenting about the breeding uh, the popular suggestion was making a one block gap so the babies could fit through but the parents couldn't um, that unfortunately does not work uh, babies for collision purposes seem to have the same uh, width and height as their parents so they do not fit through one block gaps so yeah that no worky I tried one and a half blocks but all the sheep were able to fit through so and I tried this old pig separator method I figured maybe they'd be um, tinier in terms of width than their uh, parents but that is not the case so they were not able to fit through there either so yeah that's not gonna work but then um, a guy named ArchXL suggested a system like this where you have the parents going around in minecarts and then you click on them and the, the babies fall into like a holding area down here and then you kill them eventually um, the problems with this number one is the the mobs have to be kept moving or else they come out of the minecart when you uh, shut your game down and turn it back on and number two this is not a very efficient use of space um, I would need a whole bunch of animals in a very tiny space to uh, make this efficient because I would just walk down the line and spam a whole bunch of wheat and then all the babies would fall down into a different area and then I would go kill them later so but it is a very good idea and it got me thinking about something like this now I could have power rails on either side here which makes the minecarts bounce back and forth and then I would have excuse me I would have um, uh, two mobs one in each cart here and then I would just walk down the line click on them click on them click on them they make babies and then the babies spawn I think on the tracks they would probably spawn on the tracks and they would get pushed um, into these uh, pits and there would be like a holding area down here where they would sit and wait f to be killed so or I could even work out some sort of automatic kill system but I'd probably do it manually for the experience points so yeah that's the this is the best candidate so far for the breeding system um, I could fit a lot of mobs I think this is a 7 by 6 area so yeah I could fit all the mobs very comfortably in uh, the underground hall. So unless someone has a better idea, um, I'd probably go ahead with something similar to this. I really don't know though. It's, I mean, we're still we haven't done the first uh, floor of the hall yet, so I won't know what I'm going to do until I get to the uh, the second floor, which won't be for like a couple of days at least. So yeah, that's what I'm going to do with the breeding system. Now, one more thing I've been working on um, for the redstone hall. I want to have something that looks like a main computer for the city. I thought that would be a really cool idea. So I tried to build something here that uh, looks nice, that looks sort of like computerish and futurish kind of thing. And uh, I think it looks pretty good. Obviously it's unpolished. I haven't really done anything else. Um, and I probably won't be able to use the iron blocks because they'd be like, you know, stupid expensive. I would need tons and tons of iron for this, but we'll see. 
anyone has any suggestions for what blocks to use for a computer kind of thing, let me know. But yeah, it would look like futuristic, and here we would have a control panel, and it would control all the redstone in the city. So the lighting system, the minecart system, you know, it have master switches basically for everything. So I thought that was a really cool idea, and uh, I was just messing around with uh, sort of the the look for that hall. And the wiring is very simple. It's just a four o'clock that uh, um, turns the torches on and off at different delays. That's all. So yeah, that's what I've been working on the past day or two. All this crap. And I think uh, I think some of this will work out nicely. The farm is definitely going to work out nicely. And the breeding, I'm not quite sure yet. We'll see how this turns out. <laughs> you already got a sheep in the cart here. So yeah. Um, I'm not quite sure what we're going to do the rest of the episode. I think I'm going to try to knock out the rest of the, the farming hall and at least start building this thing. Alright, so some people said they wanted me to build stuff on camera, so let's let's do it. I'll do a voiceover, like a professional Hollywood motherfucker. So right now I'm putting down fence posts uh, underneath the next section of the farm that we're going to build. And I'm not going to finish it, I'm just going to do this one section because I haven't knocked out the wall yet. And uh, the fence posts are to prevent me from trampling my crops when I walk on them because it messes up the hitboxes. Um, it's hard to explain. Basically, the fence is one and a half blocks tall, so I'm actually walking on the fence when I'm walking on those blocks. It's weird. So I won't be able to trample my crops. And this little uh, offshoot here is designed to hydrate the tiles. Now, if you have water next to, to uh, farmland, it'll hydrate up to four blocks away. So. I think this the farmland is seven blocks total across. I can't remember, but uh, yeah, it needs uh, water on both sides to hydrate all of it. As you see on the bottom there, it's all brown. And I'm gonna use one stream of water down either side to do it. Quite simple, and but I fuck up and uh, don't realize that I cut off the water stream here, and I fix that later. But yeah. Um, Usually I cut out a lot of this stuff from my LPs because um, I'm assuming most people don't want to watch me s sit here and watch me build something for 20 minutes, you know, at a time. But if they want me to, if you guys want me to, you know, do something like this, I can I can do that. It's certainly easier than um, trying to record uh, tons of new content all the time. So, and see, I fuck up right there. That's why I don't build stuff on camera. I fuck up all the time, like that. <laughs> All right, so now I'm outlining, just doing the outline for the uh, the farm, and eventually I'll, I'll uh, fill all of the outsides in with sandstone and make it look prettier. But right now I'm just trying to get the the basic uh, farm done. And I still have to knock out more of the ceiling and the wall behind us there uh, to make this go further. So, but I wanted to get at least one part of the farm done on camera this time. Now we have glowstone heal here. Um, wheat requires a light level of nine on the block above the wheat, not on the wheat block itself, in order to grow. So I think this will be sufficient. If not, I can throw one in the middle. But uh, yeah, that's more or less the our farm. It's quite easy, and uh, yep, yeah, that's pretty much it. You know, call me crazy, but I don't think the new neighbors like me very much. Hmm. Yeah, they shouldn't be angry about something. <laughs> this is like the nicest house I've ever built, and I built it in like 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah, but that's um, one thing we're definitely going to do uh, when the official release comes out. Or maybe I'll do it even before then. Well, no. When there's a way to get back and forth from this place, from the end, um, then I will build a house here we can hang out and do stuff but as of right now there's no way to get back we can get there but we can get back so I'm assuming that won't come until the uh, official release this really is like the nicest house I've ever built <laughs> that's sad alright so that's just about going to wrap up this episode um got a couple of new ideas for the city so let's uh let's head back there all right, might as well grow some wheat while uh, I finish the rest of the room. And it'll be a nice dry run for the lighting and see how that works out. So, 
Yep, that's the uh, the farm in the middle. And then along the sides, we're going to have a two wide walkway here. And also on the other side, over here. And then along the, the edges, uh, excuse me, that means the Rangers game is on, so I only had a couple minutes before uh, that starts. I'm a big hockey fan. So, yeah, anyway, along the sides, we're going to have uh, sugar cane. So, like this. All right. Maybe some cacti. I'm not quite sure. I'll, I'll figure a little specifics out later. But for now, it's going to be like this. And I'll fill all of these in with source blocks later as well. And, yeah, just like this. Okay. And it'll go all the way around. I think it looks nice, actually. Especially with sandstone um, behind it. It'll look very, very nice. Very nice, very nice. And I'll get rid of these eventually, too. Okay. Alright, there we go. So, that's what the sides are going to look like. I think that will look very, very nice. And uh, same for this side. Uh, maybe I'll sprinkle a cacti in there, or a cactus in, in there, every so often. Do not know. But I'm going to need a lot of uh, sugar cane for books, for enchantments and stuff like that. Enchanting tables, because uh, uh, you need bookshelves to uh, make higher, uh, whatchamacallit, enchantments. Anyway, so that's pretty much how this room's going to be laid out. I think it's coming along nicely. Um, I will work on this in the next few days, over the weekend. I'll try and finish the uh, the farm, and I'll try and dig out this room somewhat. Now, uh, some of my ideas for this place. Uh, I think... Okay, so we have the storage hall, the farming hall, and we have the hall of death. It, well, I just got to turn around. Okay, we have the hall of death, and then we're going to have the, uh, the armory here. Okay. And then we need the crafting hall. Okay, so... The crafting hall, I mean, really should go here. It should be in the first three, definitely. Especially since the storage hall is over here. Okay, so that'll be the crafting hall. Um, it's going to have like a, a forge kind of thing with lots of lava. It's basically where all the workbenches and stuff will be. And all the tools and stuff like that. So that's going to be the crafting hall. Okay, and we're going to have the mob trap and the armory. And then here I think I'll put the redstone hall. Um, with the main computer that I showed you earlier. I think that'll look nice. And then the other ones that we have are... Uh, fuck, I don't even remember. This is like I have them all written down somewhere. Um, if you have any more ideas for halls and stuff, let me know. But I think the next one would be the beer hall. Um, like It'll be like a, a pub. Kind of cool, like a hangout. And then eventually we're going to have living quarters and stuff. But uh, that's way down the road. So, Alright, those are my ideas. That's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to finish this one. Definitely. Then I'm going to work on the storage hall so I can actually move my crap in there. So I'm still using that place as storage. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, and I'm going to try to do that over the next few days. I want to get these two done. Okay. And I think that's all i got to say. So I'll uh, see you guys next time. I'll probably get the next LP out. I'll shoot for Sunday. We'll see. Sunday or Monday. Depends. And, uh, yeah, so stay safe, have fun, and peace out, or as Toby says, peace off.